Today on the show, strategy plus action equals the cultivation of courage. Great coaches and consultants like you have the ability to change people's lives and transform entire organizations. And your impact can often go far beyond the clients you work with. One of the reasons I love working with coaches and consultants is because of that ripple effect. This show is here to highlight your expertise and empower you with resources and new ideas to grow your business. Welcome to Strategy in Action. Laban Ditchburn is on the show today. Laban is a phenomenal guy. I had the good fortune to meet a few weeks ago. Shout out to Drew Doraney uh, in his group for that introduction to Laban. And I jumped in, grabbed his audio book, uh, Bet on You, which is just phenomenal. I can't recommend it highly enough. Um, specifically the audio version because the color and uh, just the, the the texture of Laban telling this from voices to, to really feeling like you're in the middle of those stories. Uh, it's fantastic. So I highly recommend that as well as his podcast, Become Your Own Superhero, uh, where he interviews amazing people every week. Laban has overcome a lot in his life um, about every addiction you can imagine (laughs) that he talks about very openly in that book. And he's transformed not only himself, but clients over the years. And very specifically, this new direction that he's gone is, is really helping people cultivate that courage in themselves. We get into that origin of where, you know, the label of the world's best courage coach came from and why it's it's so important and goes far beyond some vanity <laughs> thing that someone might might think about when they first hear that. It, it's so much deeper than that and, and important. Um, we really dig in around this idea of courage in this episode because it's so critical that we have that. And it's not, you know, the idea of never being afraid, no fear, any of that stuff. Um, but there's a there's an aspect of setting that fear aside sometimes, right? And doing the thing anyway. Um, and the most amazing outcomes can happen when you have that mindset and you take those actions. And what we get into today on the show is really specific instances of where we can use that skill as well as how to, you know, how to cultivate that, how to build that skill of having courage and what to do when we need to separate ourselves from, you know, the millions of other people who do the exact same thing that we do. Uh, When we want to have that conversation with somebody, when we want to bring on a mentor, having the courage to stand in your own power and really believe and know that what you have to offer is valuable. That's, that's everything when it comes to certainly in business, but even in your personal relationships, that's everything. We all are drawn to those folks who have that confidence, who know that what they stand for, what they do in their business is valuable and it's serving others. I'm excited for you to meet Laban if you haven't heard him before and really benefit from everything that we dig into today. All right, let's jump in. Laban Ditchburn, welcome to the show. Jason Croft, buenos dias. Muchas gracias. Thanks for having me, brother. Absolutely. Yeah, you're fresh down there uh, back in Mexico now, right? Si, senor. Yeah, I played El Carmen not far from Cancun and uh, a beautiful part of the world if you haven't been down here. Oh, that's that's a spot. You were showing me the, the view from your window earlier. Uh, that's all I needed to see to understand exactly why you're where you are. <laughs> that's fantastic. So thanks for thanks for jumping in here. I there's so much I want to dig into with you. Um, and really specifically, you know, I wanted to have an episode here around this idea of courage. So who better to be on talking courage than the world's best courage coach, Laban Ditchburn? 
right here. And, and I, 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 there's, it's a big giant topic. So we'll, we'll, we'll take it down and, and discuss some certain areas where it really, really, you know, moves the needle by having the right amount of courage. So, you know, I, I have the good, the good fortune to, you know, listen to your audio book, um, which is such a blast, um, bet on you. And, it's it's both revealing, encouraging, entertaining, the perfect blend of story and lessons and all that. So I encourage everyone to to go and 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 read that, listen to it. Um there's a lot of background there, but it all stems, you know, from this overcoming, overcoming addictions and all of that, that certainly I know has colored where you are, but there's also kind of a shift now, a very purposeful shift in what you're doing with your coaching practice now, being a courage coach. So ta- let's talk about that shift a little bit. What's Where was entry point into that? Well, the, the first thing I want to address is I know... I put my life on it. Someone heard world's best courage coach and they were immediately, how dare, how dare he called himself that, right? Or what gives him the right to, to make that declaration? And and I'll, I'll throw some, some explanation around that because it's really important and, it, and it's about the power of declaration. And this statement, this world's best courage coach, only came about in September 2021 after an experience with a guy known as Steve Hardison. And for those who don't know, Steve Hardison is an enigma. He is a devout Mormon guy who lives in Mesa, Arizona, who's known as the ultimate coach. And I know we've got a lot of coaches listening to the show. He is 200K for, for 50 hours. And you have any people flying from all around the world only to his house there's no virtual, there's no Zoom, there's no Skype, there's no telephone calls. It's all paid up front. If you're late more than once, you void the contract and the money goes to a charity and people fly in from all over the world. And some of his clients are people like Ian Van Zandt. He's got Clayt Mask, who's the CEO and founder of Infusionsoft or Keep, uh, a number of high-profile athletes and, um, you know, Tony Robbins' wife, a former wife rather, you know, you kind of get a feel for this guy. And there's a video that exists on YouTube. And if you're happy to link it, Jason, it'd be amazing. It's it's a two hour and 10 minute video on YouTube that was DNA alteringly good for me. And I watched this last year after being recommended uh, by a couple of people that are connected to Steve and uh, it changed my life forever. And I was so moved by it that I wanted to speak to the man to see whether he was how he was in the video to what he was in real life. Because usually you see some people online and they don't correlate to how they are, right? And and I'm very resourceful. And I got this guy's phone number and I rang him up and he picks up the phone. And I said, Steve, it's Laban Ditchburn from Melbourne, Australia. I was still back in Australia, right? And he goes, Laban. So great to hear from you. I've been waiting for this call all my life. And I was like, who is this man, right? Greatest, greatest answer of a phone I've ever experienced in my life. And I said, Steve, I just wanted to ask you one very specific question because I knew I had nothing to offer this guy. At the time, like we were living in Australia, we were still locked down. You know, this guy financially he's been very successful he's got this amazing wife that he talks about he's been married like ever since they were child um, teenage sweethearts he's got this fantastic coaching practice and he's connected to all these amazing people he also never appeared on podcasts or did interviews in fact he rejected being on the oprah winfrey show on multiple occasions right he wanted to maintain the integrity of what he was doing and so he didn't exist anywhere really apart from this one video on youtube and and I said to him, Steve, I just want to ask you one very specific question. He goes, what's that, Laban? I said, what do you need help with? That's the only thing I could ask him. And he goes, wow, Laban, I just want to acknowledge you for asking me that question. He said, you know what? I'm 8% body fat. I'm 64 years old. I do 10 miles a day. 
I got the love of my life. I got everything a man could ever want, but I really want to thank you for asking me that question. I said, oh, no worries, Steve. You're welcome. I said, uh, are you still not doing podcasts and interviews? He goes, that's right. And I said, oh, okay, cool. The uh, reason I ask is I'm a speaker, I'm a coach, and uh, I've got this amazing podcast series called Become Your Own Superhero, and I'm well on my way to being known as the world's most positively influential speaker. But someone that I respect and admire recently said there's too much ego associated with that statement. Now, this guy, Jason, a devout Mormon, yells down the phone, Laban, you tell that person to fuck off. Do you know who I am? <laughs> I'm like, I've gone completely JD Jakes or whatever is evangelical at this point. I'm like, who are you, Steve? He goes, I'm the best coach in the world. And the way he said it was remarkable. And I'm not doing it any justice at all, but it had absolutely zero ego. And if you know Steve Hardison at all, or you've read about him, heard about him, you'll know that I'm speaking the truth here. And what transpired on that phone call was 13 minutes of life-changing outcome for me. Now, I got off the phone and I called up a guy, Chris Doris. And Chris Doris was a coaching client of Steve's. He's known as the mental toughness coach. He is about $3,000 an hour if you wanted to work with him. And I needed money. My wife was back in Russia. We were trying to get out of the country, trying to flee the lockdowns. And, and I said to him, Chris, I just spoke to Steve Harnison. And he's like, what? And I said, oh, yeah, I just had a chat with Steve Harnison for 13 minutes. He's like, what do you mean? And I was like, we just sp spoke on the phone. And he's like, couldn't believe that I had the balls to ring this guy, right? Like getting hold of this guy is even harder than getting hold of Tony Robbins, apparently, right? And uh, he said, do you have any idea of the gift of courage you have to bring to the world? And I'd been coaching for a little while and I and I was dabbling with some other names and I at one point you know called myself dino balls coaching because you know what's bigger than regular balls and you know um, I had all these different things but it, nothing really resonated with me and in that moment the world's best courage coach came about right as this declaration of how I was going to show up in the world which which exactly related to the Steve Hardison video and when you watch it you'll know what I mean and so we spent four hours together coming up with this formula of how I was going to create abundance in my life. Because we'd been, I started my entrepreneurial career in, when lockdown happened in March 2020. And in Australia, I wasn't eligible for any of the financial payouts. And we were in lockdown for nearly two years. All right, we had the strictest lockdowns pretty much anywhere in the world. Maybe China has surpassed that now, but at the time it was certainly Melbourne. And we came up with this script. And I was going to cold call the, the biggest companies on the planet, the CEOs of the biggest companies on the planet, and use the script. And I started calling, and I rang Eric Yang, who's the CEO for Zoom, and he was in his car, and his English, he's an Asian guy, and his English was pretty broken. He couldn't understand me, and that sort of fizzled out. And I called people at Cisco and, and uh, didn't get through. It was starting to get late in the US. And I called Hodges Real Estate in Australia, which is the oldest real estate company in the country. And a very, very big company as well. And this guy picks up the phone and he says, hi, Tony speaking. I said, Tony Zarka? He said, yes, it is. I said, Tony, it's Laban Ditchburn from Melbourne, Australia here. He goes, oh, hi, Laban. Uh, do we know each other? Have we spoken before? I said, Tony, we've never spoken before, but today's your lucky day. And he laughs. He goes, why is it my lucky day, Laban? I said, because I'm the world's best courage coach. And I teach your people how to take bold, massive, strategically courageous action to facilitate their own miraculous outcomes. Now, Jason, that phone call lasted 13 minutes. It was There was no prep other than the script. And a week later, I was invited back to pitch for some training and coaching for this company with no pitch deck, no warm intro, no nothing, right? Just the audacity of this declaration. And we jumped on this call and Steve Arneson talks about the power is in the listener. The power is in the listener. And so I asked him one question about what direction he wanted to take the company. And he spoke about wanting to take the company from good to great. And I just listened with the patience of a saint for 45 minutes as he told me everything I needed to know about how I could best help this organization. And I let him finish. And I said, Tony, what about 
becoming the best real estate company in the state of Victoria. About 5 million people that live there. And his eyes widened and he looked up and he started to nod sort of subconsciously. And I said, well, Tony, what about being the best real estate company in Australia? And now he's really getting into this. He can see possibility for the first time, right? And I said, Tony, you do realize in order for you to have the best real estate company in Australia, you need to be the best real estate CEO in Australia. And 30 seconds later, Jason, Tony was standing. This is on a Zoom call, by the way, because we're still in lockdown, yelling at the top of his lungs, I'm the best real estate CEO in the world. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> And I pitched a quarter of a million Australian dollars, which is about 200,000 US at that time, for training and coaching for about a three-month program of work to these guys. Only having had this outrageous cold call a week earlier and, and, and listening to this Tony, right? And the work that they needed help with, like it was a lot. They needed a lot of help and it was going to take a lot from me to, to serve them in that way. And so the price was indicative of what they needed help with. And he didn't laugh at me. He didn't hang up on me. He didn't joke. He didn't scoff. He sat there like a true professional and said, you know what, Laban, I physically do not have the liquid to invest in that amount right now, but let me see what I can do. And the reason I wanted to share the story with you is that what happened with Hodges Real Estate and Tony Zarka at this point in my life is irrelevant because what it what it allowed me to see was possibility and that I could play an influence at the top of the business game and impact and influence people in a way that I never thought was possible. I was $150 an hour for my coaching prior to that. Now I'm $1,000 an hour US. And, you know, am I, th- am I $900, $850 an hour more valuable from the knowledge I've acquired? Yeah, I've acquired some powerful knowledge. But it's knowing that I can impact and influence. And so that in my encouragement to people listening to this that are in coaching and, and consulting is that, you know, you would have heard this as well, that coaching, uh, our fees are a direct reflection of our self-worth, Right. Now, I know, I knew that I could help them and I've been able to go on and help other organizations and other um, one-on-one coaching clients um, as a result. And it's there's something magical about making a declaration and, and for people that want to make a declaration of the world's best, come up with something that is non-quantifiable and intangible. So that unless there is a world's best courage coach competition held out of Las Vegas, Nevada next year, Until that happens, I can still make that declaration of being the world's best courage coach. And the beautiful thing about it is it's not inextricably linked to who I am. If I lost my marriage, my podcast, my house, my bank account, you know, I'm still the world's best courage coach. And so many people in the corporate space are made redundant after 30 years with an organization and they're completely lost And so what my encouragement is that if you can come up with this declaration and then ask yourself the question, how would the world's best, insert your chosen niche here, conduct himself, your life will transform forever. That's perfect. That's perfect. I love that because there's such there's such boldness in this idea, the declaration, right? First to yourself, (laughs) right? Some some people don't get past that point. Oh, I couldn't possibly make, you know, like the idea, much less out in public, much less on a phone call, right, with a top CEO like that. But it only takes one of those experiences, just like you just lined out, to to sink in, right? And, you know, it doesn't, doesn't mean that, you know, you have no more problems, you know, with, with fear or courage or anything like that. But when you you get that first one and your, your cells feel it, right? Like you, you know, like, Oh, okay. There's, there's something here. And especially when you're just backing up what you believe in already, 
because a lot of people would, you know, they'll whatever if it's fake modesty, real modesty, how they were raised, whatever it is, they may believe one hundred percent in what results they can get for somebody. But oh, I, I couldn't make a declaration like that. I couldn't possibly. And if we don't in in this world today, <laughs> good luck ever getting those phone calls. If you get you know, connected to somebody, if you don't have that bold statement declaration and then, you know, ooze it out of every <laughs> pore of your, of your body, people are just on to the next and on to the next. And that's the point of, of what can you do? What can you have to, to again, give yourself enough courage, right? Uh, to, to even make that phone call. But then once you get that opportunity, for that other person, for them to feel it, right? What is it? You know, we make our decisions emotionally and then we back them up with logic, right? They want to feel emotionally like, I don't know what it is, but we need to keep talking or we, there's something here, right? Amen, brother. And, and uh, <laughs> you know what? Like it creates this, this role, this um, forward momentum, right? Does momentum ever go backwards? I don't think it does. This ongoing momentum and you become more and more brazen <laughs> with, with how outrageous you can you can become. Certainly that's my experience and it's infectious, right? And I've absolutely seen it rub off on other people. And I've got a lot of friends who are podcasters who are now reaching out to podcast uh, guests that they've never dreamed about having on or being able to be connected to people and – it's it's we owe that to the people that we're serving to be bold and to be brave and to be courageous because there is so much cowardice in the world right now. There's so much there's no one speaking the truth anymore. And the truth is very attractive. Very, very attractive. And and the people that are aligned with you, that will resonate with you, are the people that you want to deal with. You know, we created this mastermind called World's Best. And we've got about 20 people in there now. We've got four Hall of Fame speakers. There's only 250 Hall of Fame speakers that have ever lived, right? We've got four New York Times best-selling authors, people that have made millions of dollars. Les Brown is a member of the world's best mastermind, right? Because he needs help with stuff. He's the greatest transformational speaker in the history of the world, right? At least in my opinion, in the opinion of a few other people, like, he needs help with stuff. And when you start to understand that that even the most successful people on the planet need help and are usually really good at asking for help as well, right? What value can I add this? And the, and the parameters of the group are real simple. It's a $10 fine for any negative self-talk, right? You, you'll very rarely ever hear me saying something poorly of myself. If you And I won't say never because it might exist out in the, in the ethernet somewhere, right? $10 fine. So no one uses negative talk or talks poorly of other people, right? There's your first challenge. Oh, I could never do that. $10, mother flipper. You know what I mean? And then the second thing is what value can I add this group? Me. You've got to show up knowing you can add value. What value can I add Les Brown's life, right? Well, plenty if you just listen. And then the third thing is like, what do I need help with, right? You get good at being concise and then you get solutions, you know? getting it from people that have already done it 10 times over. Oh, yeah. It, that brings up an interesting aspect of asking for help um, when you, you know, whether it's, you know, coming from an addiction and like, I've got to do something to get out of this or it's, it's, a, it's a little, man, I should be further along in my coaching practice. What's going on? It's having that, courage you know to to reach out and ask for that help but i think there's a there's a balance and i'd love to get your take on this too in helping people find that balance of taking that first step to ask for help but then also not putting all your power in the external in someone else oh the solution is out there somewhere and there's a i think there's a there's a tiny little distinction that exists and it, it, maybe it's just different for everyone and you just have to feel it and find it. But I don't think it's acknowledged enough because yes, a lot of times we just need some help. 
but then we can't continue to go through our lives of just, oh, the solution's out there and let me get the next, you know, shiny object or the next thing it's out there. At some point you've got to take this on. And I think there's a way of getting help, a way of getting, maybe solving a specific problem. What's, what have you seen in, in that world a little bit? Have you, have you, I guess, encountered sort of both sides of that? Yeah, it's a brilliant, brilliant question. And and I'll quote Les Brown to start off with. He says, ask for help, not so that you appear weak, but so that you can remain strong and keep asking for help until you get it, all right? The, the, the people are served the best from a help perspective when they know what they want help with. When you know what you want help with, and sometimes that can take a bit of practice, right? And I don't nail it perfect every time, but I'm getting a lot more concise with asking for the help that I need. Because if you, the, the people at the top are unbelievably generous, but they always have, also have very strong boundaries and they just want to get to the point very quickly. What is it that you need help with? Not They don't want to know the life story. If they want that, they'll ask that from you. But it's get to the point, all right? And so many people fluff around with um, trying to build a backstory or whatever. Like, like, and I'm starting to become like this as well. Where I'm getting good at just saying, tell me what you want. What do you need help with? Tell me. Then if I can help you, if I will. If I can't, then I'll be able to introduce you to someone that can. All right? And that's, that's, that's the key to it, I think. These people are very good, for the most part, at knowing what they need help with. Yeah. And 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 understanding the dynamic of you can't just spend all your time asking. Like even reaching out to podcast guests in the early days when I had I got less on when I had ten subscribers. Right, it's the reason why him and him and I connected. And and I was always intending like what value can I add less's life? Never what can I get from this? And I do that with everyone. So it's an easy habit to be into. I don't know if that explains explains what you're asking necessarily. Yeah, it, yeah, it does. It's definitely an aspect of that too because in, and and I think that's the big difference is the the most successful folks have that when they go for help, number one they do go for help, but then when they do it is it's that specific problem. It's just like I need more subscribers. I need to reach more of this. I need to find better client like and they'll go to those experienced folks with that question. I see that you have this, how did you do it? And they're willing to answer any question, like you said, but it's not starting off with, because, you know, I've gone through and when I was a kid, you know, <laughs> going through, and it's not going to any of these folks with, um, I need help. Well, okay, what? Oh, which is my whole life is just, I just need help. <laughs> like, like, that's, like, okay, well, Get I'm a not therapist. The right, yeah, I'm not the right coach for you. And even in a therapy session, it'd be like, you know, take, you've got to, you've got to, figure out these these certain areas that um to get really specific with for sure i i, I like that answer a lot actually um thanks dude <laughs> with, with with folks with folks who are who are it could be a perspective a perspective client um even just people in our lives a lot of times you know we have we know what they need whether it's our service because we're trying to coach them or sell them a product or service or something, or it's, you know, it's your, it's your neighbor who, you know, exactly what they should be doing. <laughs> but the only thing standing in their way is that lack of courage. So if, uh, man, I know exactly what this prospective client needs to just skyrocket their business. I've explained it to them. They get it. They believe it. They, they're, they're bought in. But they don't believe they can do it because they lack just the courage in themselves, the courage to take that step, to make that bold world's best statement or something like that. How how do we do that better? How do we empower others with that, that courage? I learned something the other day, Jason, which I found really interesting with regards to um, the flakiness of uh, people committing – to doing things, signing up for your coaching program, signing up for coaching, signing up for masterminds, and then just disappearing, right? And I had an interesting conversation with a guy 
uh, that ended up flaking on me for the meantime, who was a very, very experienced senior guy in charge of 80 people at an organization. He was also a coach and he had a program that people were going through and they paid like five figures to go through for the six weeks course. So he was pretty well established and he was exiting out of the corporate life. And he said to me, this is just me personally. He said, Laban, you're, and he studied NLP, which I haven't done, but I think I must do it a bit organically. He said, your voice is very hypnotic. Like it's it's kind of like, and my, my we spoke about this off camera, like my accent in, in America particularly is very well received, men and women, like three times a day. I love your accent, right? It's great for the ego. But a, a friend of mine who's a brilliant coach, Vanessa Brewers, spoke to me about the significance of digging deeper and really getting to the root cause of why they are wanting to sign up, right? And because the thing is often not the thing is, you know, for those in the coaching game, we know that, that like sometimes it can take a real amount of skill to get to the root cause. So my encouragement would be to get better at pushing back if you're getting flaky people, pushing back on the people that are all hyped up and enthusiastic to almost qualify out of the sale, to like push back on them, you know, in a way that will really get them to think about what life's going to look like 24 hours from now when the hype of being in this conversation of being all jacked up. And because it was starting to really, like this happened a lot in the US, Jason. I had a lot of people flake and I was like, what is going on here? Because I am I do what I say and I say what I mean, right? And I was just giving people the benefit of the doubt and, and expecting that they would do the same. And it's not the case. You've got to meet people where they're at with certain stuff. To counter that, it's also helped me become super dialed in about my ideal customer. And my ideal customer has shifted and I want to only work with people that are already very far along in their healing journey that have invested in themselves in coaching at least one or two times before that that just want that final kick, that final little boost. All right. I don't, I don't want to, I, I choose not to sp spend time coaching people that aren't there yet because my style of coaching has become impatient in many ways because I don't, I don't wear the kid gloves. There's, there's better people suited to handling those kind of people, right? I'm sure you know what I'm talking about here. Um, and it's nothing personal against those people. Just I like to move with speed. Success loves speed, right? And and that's just so, – so these are the blessings that have come out of it in a roundabout way, but that's my encouragement to people that, with regards to what you're asking. Yeah, that's great. What so? What is that I, ideal client? What are you looking? Are you looking for folks who are basically putting it's it's tweaks, it's nuances in what they've got going at that point? I mean, I guess like we talked about, who know specifically what they're coming to you for, and it's not this vague. Well, my business just isn't quite working. Is it more? Man, I mean, with that moniker, right? The self, you know, it, it, put in their moniker of, of being a courage coach. What are they coming to you for? Do they do, it, Does it still run the gamut in terms of solution? Or is it specifically with help just taking the, the, the bold steps necessary? Yeah, well, the, the declaration, like, this is one of my favorite questions when I get asked, we're out and about, right? Because we wear so many hats as entrepreneurs, so like, so people say, oh, hey, Laban, nice to meet you. What do you do? I'm the world's best courage coach. And like 99 times out of 100, they're like, wow, what does that look like? And, and my next favorite line is, I teach people how to take bold, massive, strategically courageous action to facilitate miraculous outcomes. And I do that by being a speaker, a coach. I've got a podcast that I'm going to mastermind, right? From a coaching perspective, people, the people that I, that I love working with the best are people that love me that resonate with me they love being in my space and my energy they shouldn't be polarized or triggered by my intensity because it's that intensity that they can leverage they can borrow that ethos and be okay with putting themselves in a very uncomfortable position even people that are super successful like 
And and that's what I love about it. Like I never belittle, I never demean, I never like, and there's no judgment. There's no judgment about what you want to do and how you want to go about it. So you need to be at a certain level of, of on the journey. You need to be at a certain level of development in order to be okay with that stuff and not be triggered by a world's best statement and not to be caught up in negative self-talk about, I could never call myself that. Don't get me wrong. I have conversations. I have 100 to 1 conversations with people out in the street, supermarkets, at, at service stations, you know, at parks, wherever I end up talking to people about possibility. But it's the people that see the value in being around this energy because this is what I'm like the entire time. And I, and I love seeing possibility and allowing people to see possibility. What's that transition point usually – in one of those conversations when they're in it, you can tell they're Europe, they love being around your energy and all of that. What's what's that that point in the conversation where they realize you have the answer for them? Is it kind of once they've described what they're struggling with, what they're really, they feel like that block is, and then are you able to kind of diagnose a little bit or figure out like how do you convey to them that you're that solution for that problem the obvious thing that comes to mind jason is that when you when you allow people to come to that solution by themselves by leading by example by being absolutely bold and brazen in the way that you go about sharing all of the good and the bad and the ugly. And, you know, you've read the book, like it's all there, right? And that one of my superpowers is that people reveal to me information about themselves that they've never told anyone before within minutes of meeting me because they feel comfortable in my own vulnerability. It's not that I'm deliberately trying to get information out of them, like Scientology or whatever, like, um, they just they do, and there's it's a judgment free zone. I think that's part of it because it usually comes down to a a block or a limiting belief from some singular childhood event, some period of physical abuse from a father when he was drunk. You know, is one example that that prevented one particular client from having the confidence to ask for more money in his business as, as an entrepreneur and he was brilliant at it he was an overachiever and he should have been charging more and he was attracting all these shitty clients because he was he wasn't putting a premium on his service right this is in uh, a manual labor thing it's not even a coach or anything and uh and him realizing that the, the insignificance of that moment in his life but the destructive effect it had and it no longer holds any dominion over him was like oh thank god for that you know like and then he was able just to move forward with it. And then I think he doubled and then tripled his prices and then lost 5% of his clientele and ended up, you know, doubling his money or whatever. Like that, that's, that for me is the real fun part. Um, I'm not a, a miracle worker by any stretch in the sense where I'm, you know, it's, and one of the things that I love signing in my books, you know, you, you talk about this before, is that I, I say to a few people, you already have everything inside you to create the life of your dreams. It's already within us. It already is, you know, we're, we're made of space dust and, and, what, and this divine creation. It's already here. And you just got to start dialing into that. So I rely a lot on intuition. And your intuition gets better when you're regularly correct and it's regularly right. And the only way you can figure that out is by being able to ask difficult questions. You touched on earlier that power of listening so much of the time. You may be the pers first person who ever really listened <laughs> to that to that other person you're standing with. Whether they're somebody you met in a grocery store or that top CEO that you're on the phone with who's just barraged with, gimme, 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 I need this, I need this, and... I mean, that's why the first phone call that you talked about when you said, how can I help you? Like, you know, how rare that is for any of us to, to hear on a daily basis. Hey, I just want to listen. What can I help you with? It's a sad state of the world, maybe, that that's such a rarity, but awesome that 
we have such a, a an ability, those of us who love that idea <laughs> and love to listen and love to take in that other person, um, we have a superpower there, right? Yeah, oh, thanks, dude. I, I I had nothing else to offer him at the time. And then as I got to know Stephen, he's become a, a, a mentor of mine and I'm a co-host of a podcast called The, the Ultimate Coach Podcast. There's four of us. And as a result, I've had seven hours on FaceTime with Steve over the last year. And the dollar value alone, like you can do 10 hours with Steve for 45K, right? The dollar amount, let's say it's 30K, but it's the other stuff. The, the plant medicine thing that I spoke about off camera, the introduction to Dr. Roxanne Beck, she was a she was a client of Steve's. You know, I interviewed Ayana Van Zan on the Ultimate Coach podcast. She like voted top eighth spiritual woman person on the planet. And and after the interview, because she learned about my wife and I and the challenges around pregnancies that we've had, has introduced us to two of her dear friends that have created these spiritual things for like help make this baby and like you see the kind of the flow on effect like i can't i can't quantify any of what's happened because of that that one phone conversation and the the courage to get on to reach out to steve and i've made lots of phone calls where i've never been able to get hold of the person i've been rejected i've had the phone slam down in my in my ear a couple of times not too many but enough enough to you know speak about it truthfully but the other stuff that's flowed forth is pure miracles my life is a daily miracle as a result of the this this way of being and my life is unbelievably rewarding and it's not without its challenges jason i, I assure you that you know but i'm figuring this stuff out and i and i know that my life will always be abundant in the areas that matter because of this mindset Oh, I can, I, I can imagine. Yeah. I love that, that purposeful conscious aspect. There's, there's one thing to sort of kind of be put together of like, just more helpful or, you know, you like it in this, but when you can sit down and design this person you want to be in the sense of the, the best things you see in others, the best things you want to be in yourself, and you can be purposeful and go out into the world with that. And again, like you said, as soon as you get that positive, you know, reaction back, you know, as you build your intuition, as you build, you know, all of these things that just expands and you see, you see the magic. And, and I imagine with that statement that you made, that you, you know, your daily <laughs> miracle of a life, you know, it's because you see it. A lot of times we have these miracles going on happening for us every day and, and we're not looking at them. We're not paying attention. We're not acknowledging them as they are. Uh, so I, I love the fact that, that you are doing that. And in all of that spirit too, I want to, I want to ask you, my listeners, my audience, me, what can we do uh, to get the word out more for you and who needs to come and, and talk to Laban? Well, mate, I, I first thing I want to say, I want to acknowledge you for your unbelievably thought out and considered uh, questioning today, like uh, real purposeful and, and and intentional, and I love that. And and I love the journey that you're on. And for people that are listening to this for the first time or you're a regular listener and you haven't subscribed and you haven't rated the show, it helps tremendously from an organic reach and allows people that don't know about this to, to stumble across it. So go and do that immediately. The, the one I asked that I would have, look, I I love the book that I wrote. My, it's my journey of conquering drink and drugs and gambling and philandering and limiting beliefs and autoimmune disease and, you know, finding the woman of my dreams and running ultra marathons. That part of the fun stories and there's some outrageous stuff in there as well. But the book itself, if you are struggling with any form of addiction or you know someone that's going through it, this book will help you tremendously. And it's, it's not a finger-waggling book. It's a, this is what I did. And if you get value from it, fantastic, right? So get the book. And it's in my dulcet tones on audible.com. You can get it on Kindle or paperback as well if you need to. Um, Bet on you by Laban Ditchburn. And then at the back of the book, there's some um, 
there's four different free things that you can take advantage of. That'd be my encouragement. All the links to my stuff are on my website anyway, labourditchburn.com, all the different podcasts and the mastermind, all the other stuff that I do. But I just would really, would love to leave you, you know, the audience, the listener with this, like think about what are you the best in the world at? That's non-quantifiable and intangible. So you can't be held to account, all right? No one can take it away from you. And think about what, what making that kind of declaration might have on your life. I love it. Laban, thank you so much. Incredible insights today. And uh, I really appreciate you being here. Love you, Jace. Appreciate you, brother. Absolutely. And we'll see you all next time. Thanks so much for tuning in and being a part of this show. If you want help creating authority building video content or even a client generating show of your own, go to medialeadsco.com and let's connect. I'll talk to you soon on the next Strategy and Action.